this AI agent does all of your cold outreach for you on LinkedIn. You give it a company and it researches that company, it finds the key people that you're looking for, creates a connection request message, does industry research and creates a follow-up message for you to send to that lead. Essentially, this automation does all the outreach effort for you that can literally take up hours and many companies hire employees to do it for them. Well, if you're new to the channel, my name is Matt and I'm super passionate about creating AI solutions for businesses, especially on the sales and marketing side of things. And in this build, we use Relevance AI to create an AI employee that does all the work that you need. So if that interests you, just watch all the way until the end and I'm sure you're not gonna be disappointed. Essentially, the way we think about AI agents as of right now is that that you give them a goal and they, they understand their surroundings, they understand the tools that they have available, and then they go about performing uh, those tasks to achieve that goal. There are many different ways to build AI agents. Uh, there is AutoGPT, for example, there is Crew AI, but the platform that I'm gonna focus on today is Relevance AI, because Relevance AI is super beginner friendly. They don't require any code to get started, and it is a platform that I have been using in the past few weeks. So I do believe that that's the platform that we should get started with our first AI agent build. So essentially Relevance AI is kind of asking us to think about AI agents as AI employees and then they're pushing really hard on this uh, move forward to like build AI an AI workforce and I'm going to show you guys that on the computer as of right now. So as you guys can see once when we open up Relevance AI on the computer the first thing that it shows up is build your AI workforce and they're pushing really hard on this direction of building a workforce leveraged by AI. So once you click on AI agents, you really get a picture of what these things can do. For example, this, I, th I believe that Bosch, this uh, AI sales assistant is something that came out recently, but if you scroll down and you explore this page a little bit, you'll see that it does a bunch of different tasks uh, in order to kind of like do some business development uh, for you. Essentially, it kind of like looks for leads, schedule calls, and anything in, in between as well. Here's actually a good example. Uh, you can see that this AI agent under Relevance AI can do these following um, tasks. So it finds out a lead based on your CRM, it formulates a value proposition, does the outreach, and then essentially talks to, to the lead until they book a meeting. And then they send that meeting over to the sales reps. This is definitely a little bit more advanced application of AI agents. What I want to look at today is the simpler versions. And we're going to try to build one uh, from scratch using the tools that we have already explored before in our previous videos as well. So we're gonna try to build a prospecting um, agent that instead of just going through this whole process and actually booking meetings for us, it's going to help us find leads and create messages that we can send on LinkedIn. Let's try to log in over here on Relevance AI and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So once you log into Relevance AI, try to go over to this page, the templates page, you can find it over here on the left-hand corner of your screen, click on templates and move over there. And then once you're here, you're going to see that OpenAI has created a bunch of different templates for tools and agents that we can explore. Go over here and click on Prospector Patty. All right, so let me actually break down this whole template for you guys to explain to you guys what's going on. First of all, we have a name and a brief description of what this agent can do. So essentially, uh, Prospector Patty researches potential sales prospects, enriches them, scores them, and drafts a potential outreach message. Over here is kind of the input that we need to give this AI so it actually works properly. So we're gonna give it uh, our company name, a little bit of the description of our company, and the tone for the outreach message that it's gonna create. Over here in the middle part, the way I like to think about it is essentially the same thing as looking at a skills section on someone's resume. Over there, you're gonna be able to see, for example, that that person knows how to use Excel really well, they know how to find leads really well, and um, score them in a specific way. And essentially this is the same thing that we're looking at over here. So we see that this AI has a lead enrichment tool, uh, which means that they can find more information based on an email, a scoring for that lead. It can do industry e research, Google research and website scraping. So just like a real employee in this tools portion, this skills portion of this resume, you can add more skills as you train your employee. And this is definitely something that you can look into and we're gonna look into when we're creating our simple AI agent as well. But uh, it's really cool to see what this agent is capable of doing. And you can add and take out as many of these tools as you want. And you can also connect your agent to uh, different agents, essentially creating a team of AI employees for your business as well. This is only available in the business package, which if I'm not mistaken over here, it's kind of like a ridiculous price of $5.99 a month. I'm not sure how competitive these prices are or if Relevance AI actually negotiates this. 
Uh, I haven't talked to their sales team yet, but definitely something to take a look into because if this type of system adds a lot of value to your business and you can connect multiple of these AI agents to do a what a whole department would do in your business, it can actually be worth it for you. All right, nice. So let's just break down the last little portions that we have over here on our AI agent. And essentially the, the last two things that we have are the base instructions for this uh, AI agent, which we're gonna create but from scratch as well. Uh, a workflow chart, which is essentially how we build automations inside of Relevance AI. And I can show that as well. Uh, we're also gonna create a little bit of an automation on ours. Uh, a welcome message, which is gonna appear every time that you interact with this, with this um, agent and a trigger option. So for example, let me give you a real example of what this tool can do, right? Let's just click on create agent and test it once. So let's pretend like we're gonna prospect the CEO of Notion. Uh, Notion for you guys that are familiar with is just productivity software. Uh, and let's say we're just gonna give the name as it's asking for, an email. This is an email that I'm guessing just like first name dot last name at notion.com. Probably not their real email, but who knows? Uh, and the name of the company, Notion, we'll see what it can do. All right, so once it starts working, it starts running these steps in the background. Essentially, this is kind of like an automation. And as we can see, it already enriched our lead, which means that it's giving or finding more information about the lead that we're looking for. And it's working through these steps as we wait for it to work. All right, so it looks like we have a result over here. As we can see, uh, when we click on this seven steps performed in the background, we can see all the things that it did is essentially kind of like an automation created on the back end of relevance. And it did all of these things and it came up with an outreach message and a lead score of 25. So let's just read this outreach message because I do think that this is kind of like super cool to see the types of um, personalizations able to do with these types of agents that we have. All right, so it starts by saying, but with a little bit of an introduction of saying like really impressive work that you've done at Notion. Uh, essentially it knows what Notion does, right? It's uh, your platform has revolutionized productivity and collaboration and it's clear that fostering a positive work culture is a priority for you. That's really nice that you start off with a, a cold email with this kind of um, approach. It usually, well, it's usually considered best practices, right? Like you wanna build rapport with that lead. And then you, it goes into a little bit of a par paragraph explaining what the company does. So this last paragraph kind of like mentions a little bit about Notion again, like uh, given the rapid growth and innovative spirit at Notion, I believe our services could, could be a perfect fit to further boost your team's morale and productivity. So as you guys can see, this is already a good way to create some personalization for cold emails, which are oftentimes relying on a template that is not necessarily personalized. And this is already something that we created that is extremely personalized for the company that we're serving. And it mentions thing that are, things that are relevant for that business as well. So this is just a quick example of this template as well. And now we're gonna try to build one of these AI agents um, using Relevance AI. Once you go back to your agents panel, you can just click on create a new one and we're gonna create an AI agent for Matt recruiting. If you guys have seen some of the other videos that I've created for the channel, I've been using this hypothetical recruiting agency as my examples. Uh, and essentially what we're gonna build here is very similar to the video that's popping up over here. And in that video, I created four different tools for a custom GPT. And essentially we're gonna use those same tools, but instead of having to ask for that tool to run every single time and having an authorization process in the custom GPT chat, we're gonna have that automation running in the background. So it gives us one output uh, right away with one input instead of four inputs and four outputs. So this definitely streamlines the process a little bit from what we've created in the custom GPT. First step over here is to create a little name for, for our AI automation. We're gonna go with Steve and ch I chose this random uh, emoji for that and a little bit of a description of what Steve is, right? Steve is an outreach specialist for Matt Recruiting. He's able to search hospitals, find leads and create LinkedIn messages for them. If you guys didn't know, Matt Recruiting is the recruiting agency that works in the healthcare space. This is just the example that we're running with. Let's actually start adding some tools. This is going to be step number two for us. Type in Matt, uh, click on my tools. And these are the four, four different tools that we're going to use. So essentially, the first one is that we're going to research a company based on the website of that company. We're going to research the industry that that company works in. In our scenario, we're only selling in healthcare. So that's kind of the industry that we're looking at. We're going to research the company to find leads. So for our scenario, we're going to be looking for HR directors and HR managers. 
and we're going to personalize a LinkedIn connection request. These four are popping up over here because I've cr created them in the past. And if you want to see the process of me creating those tools in the back end, just click on the video, as I mentioned before. Uh, but these are all based on templates that are available in Relevance AI. So you can just go to those templates and edit them accordingly uh, and just go from there. So we're going to add all four of these over here. One, two, three, four and we're going to close step number two is instead of saying require approval we're going to change these ones to autopilot so i'm going to keep all of them in auto run just because that's what they had in prospector patty and i think that's kind of the way to go for right now all right so base instructions here is essentially the same thing as creating instructions as when you are in the custom gpts so we are looking at creating a role uh, and defining the tasks that this GPT is going to be able to do. And we are here in this step as well. And in this step as well, is kind of where we create the inputs that is going to ask for the user, right? So as you guys can see over here in their settings, we don't have any inputs right now, but we just need to create them when we're creating this prompt over here. So I had this prompt created from before. I have a list of templates that I use for these types of automations whenever I'm creating them. And I'm actually sharing that document with you guys for free. It's a document that extensively outlines the whole process of creating this type of automation. And I'm giving uh, this to you guys for free. You, The only thing that you need to do is go down to the description and click on the Google Forms that you have there. And then I'm gonna send you that over to you via email. You can have access to the whole step-by-step -step guide and the templates that I'm using to build this AI agent. So feel free to go there and grab that document. Otherwise, just kind of look at the screen and try to emulate whenever you're creating this process as well. Okay, so let's move on down here on advanced settings and create an introduction message. I'm just gonna say, please provide the hospital you want to research and find context because that feels like the easiest way to just put this. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and create the agent just so we don't lose any of the information and we can put over the inputs over here. So the way we figure out which inputs we're gonna input, we just read it over here, the name of the input. And these are gonna match exactly the ones that we've put in the introduction down below. So here I'm just gonna put the same names as these ones. And if this is something you're gonna share with your team, go ahead and describe a little bit of what is this thing. Uh, because once you share it with them, not everyone will actually know what this is about and they might need a reminder of these what these inputs are. So we can just write a little bit of a description over here. I'm just gonna do that for tone. All right, so once you've created all these uh, inputs and you've inputted the information over here, you just scroll down and click save and the agent has been edited and is creating it for us, nice. All right, so we have a little preview of Steve over here and we're gonna try to provide with the name of a hospital to see if it can do all the tasks in the background. I don't expect it to do, but uh, because we didn't create a workflow yet, but let's give it a try. Okay, so for our first prompt, uh, we're just gonna give it a hospital and I'm gonna go with Harbor View Medical Center. Pretty sure this is a hospital in Seattle. And I asked, I also prompted it to uh, find the HR director and create a LinkedIn message for it. And it's actually already performing tasks in the background. Let's see what it comes up with. All right, so it actually did what we pr prompted it to do. This is really cool. Uh, so we asked it to research that hospital and find the HR director and create the LinkedIn message. So it went and used two of the tools that we provided it with and it researched a company to find leads and it also created a personalized message request. And apparently it found Christine, the HR director at Harborview Medical Center. So this is interesting because it actually provided us with a message that is a bit too long. Uh, it didn't provide us with the output for this one. This message, as I checked over here on a character counter, it has around 748 characters and the limit for LinkedIn message is actually 250. But if we click on the results of this task over here, we see that it gives us the LinkedIn profile as expected. And it also gives us the message that we wanted it to output. So I'm gonna do some work on the back end and create a workflow so Steve can create uh, and output the data that we actually need. But so far, this is good. Like it, it, I like the way that it actually gave us the output over here and it added some information on our services. I guess because it's prompted to do that when it's creating the, the outreach message, it kind of just added this as if it was like a, an email type of situation. So I'm gonna go back to the workflow part. And for our starting point, let's actually start with a conditional approach. Let's just say if the user has provided a hospital, then we can move on with here. And let's create a second condition saying if the user has not provided 
a hospital. So for the right side of our workflow, I'm just gonna ask it to ask for the information again. And on this side over here, I'm gonna do some work and show you guys what we come up with. Okay guys, so I wrote down some stuff here on our workflow and I'm gonna share that with you guys as of right now. All right, so for our first instruction, I just wrote, uh, I just told it to use this first tool, the company research with website to research a little bit about the hospital. Then the second step is to use this other tool, uh, research company to find leads, which uses the website URL found in the previous step to find the HR director of the hospital that the user has inputted before. And then the next step we use, um, the personalized LinkedIn request message tool to create a personalized connection request for the HR director. And this last little step is actually a combination of two steps where we're using the industry research tool to research some relevant, uh, things about the industry that we're in. For this example, Matt Recruiting only works within the healthcare recruiting industry. So that's why I already input it over here, but this can be uh, like a user input as well. And then after that, I just told it to use the insights to create a follow-up message and then write the follow-up message that will be sent after the user connects with the HR director. Our last step is just asking Steve to give all of that information back to us. So we're asking for the URL of the HR director, the LinkedIn connection request and the follow-up message uh, from Steve. So just a little note on this for you to write these instructions, there's a few tricks. So let me just show it to you guys really quickly. When you wanna add a tool to this instruction, you have to press dash and once you press dash all of the tools that you have equipped your agents to use will appear over here and then you can select anyone that you want and if you want to select a user input you can either select it from here or you can just click on double um i don't know what to call this double brackets and it will give you the options for those as well um, and then that's essentially what you need to know for right now. Once you've done that, just hit save and we can go ahead and test our agent. So for this new test, just make sure to click on, um, the plus sign over here and I'll actually give it a new, uh, hospital that I found online as well. Virginia Mason medical center should be a hospital in Seattle. And then we just click send. That's all the information that we're going to give it. And it's going to run that automation in the background and it's going to give us those three outputs that we asked for it. And essentially here, we just wait until it's done. So this is super interesting. It actually gave us the output a little bit differently from what I expected. It gave us on this format that I believe is like a code like format, but it found out who the HR director is. Apparently in this scenario is Jill, but in the meantime, it does have a personalized connection request saying about overseeing employee and labor relations at the hospital. And it has a follow up message that includes some of the challenges and trends that we mentioned on the on the step before. Uh, and it actually is, it looks like a really good sales pitch. It's interesting that it gave us the output like this because when I previously tested before, it actually just gave us the output as uh, plain text without any any extra um, coding boxes in, in that scenario. So it just gave us as like between brackets when I tested it before with the previous hospital as well. Now that our LinkedIn has loaded, it does look like this is the person that we were looking for. Uh, HR director at Virginia Mason Health. This does look like the person that we're looking for. So I'm really happy with the results that it came up with. All right, so we have another automation added to the books. And if you want to start implementing AI into your systems and streamlining your processes using AI, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm gonna leave a link down below where you can book a call. I've decided a few weeks ago that I'm gonna be helping a few businesses for free to build and implement AI solutions into their systems. So please just don't hesitate to reach out to me. You might be one of those businesses that I help out for free. And and overall, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. If you're interested in the topic, subscribe as well because I will be posting all of my builds on the channel. And I'm really happy you watched all the way to the end. If you want to keep watching, just watch the video that is recommended by YouTube. I'm pretty sure they chose a really good video for you to watch as well. And again, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.